Hello, this is Patriot in the Dark. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have some tips and possibly tricks on how to improve our situational awareness, be it if you're visually impaired or even maybe some of them sighted people too. So let's check it out. Okay, before I start, I'm gonna describe what is on screen. In the top left corner, I have a Springfield Armory 1911. It is in 45 ACP. It's the military spec version, so it's the GI model. Uh, this was the first pistol I purchased once I went totally blind. So that kind of got me into this, uh, this whole Second Amendment community again. Um, in the lower right-hand corner, I have a 1943 Walther PP. It's in 765 Browning or 32 ACP. In the center of the screen, I have my sticker, which is the logo sticker with the Revolutionary War soldier on a horse holding a lantern silhouetted by the giant huge moon. And thank you, Ghost Tactical, for that design. I do appreciate it. I also have Midnight Range TM sticker, which is the skull, but it's a pancake because he's a cook and a firearm guy. Isn't that cool? Um, I also have the Six Semper Tyrannis, which means death to all tyrants patch. And I also have a 45 ACP patch. Um, so that's it. Let's get to this. We've probably all heard the claim that once you lose your vision or you go completely blind, that somehow miraculously your hearing will compensate. And I'm not going to get into that. I would like to start by talking about a situation I was in um, at a training center. I was pretty good with mobility. Um, I've always had uh, good direction as far as actually using north, south, east, west instead of left and right like a lot of sighted people focus on. <laughs> so mobility kind of came good with for me. And so I could you know, map things out and, you know, retain where I was and work it backwards because I, I paid attention to a lot of the small details. A friend of mine didn't have that same uh, background, um, you know, paying attention to directions and stuff, and he was having a lot of issues. There was actually a courtyard where there was a lot of uh, sidewalks and cross paths and stuff that, you know, you could practice your mobility in. Well, you know, by yourself, um, and he would get lost in a courtyard, and I, I couldn't understand it because you know I didn't have that issue, and so looking over the things that he was doing is he wasn't paying attention to you know his surroundings. I mean, you'd focus on the cane, focus on the path. You know, okay, I passed this one. I went through this crack, this curb. You know, he wasn't paying around, you know, attention to everything that was going on around him. And so I, I took him aside and I said, you know, when you first walk out, you know, stop and take a breath and listen, right? You know, the, w at that training center, they had like air makeups on the roof, you know, and so there was like water uh, runoff, you know, on in one section. So you could kind of map out, you know, different sounds compared to what door you came out of. Um, and so once he started paying attention to that, that small stuff, you know, if he started getting frustrated, you know, I'd say, stop and just listen, to, you know, find out where you're at, you know, kind of orientate yourself, you know, make a mental map of things. Well, that carries over into um, pretty much anywhere you're at. You know, if you're sitting in your house, I mean, obviously, you know, the layout of your house, you know, where your rooms are, where the bathroom is, tables, chairs, whatever. Uh, you can focus on sounds in your house. You know, if it's quiet, you know, there's always sounds regardless. But you can focus and think of how you get to that sound. You know, if it's down the hall and it's in a bedroom, you know, think of the steps that you're going to take to get there. Now, if you're sitting in a doctor's office, you know, there's the person over there that's coughing over to the right-hand side of you. There's a lady looking at a magazine over here and, you know, there's that guy that smells real bad because he's got way too much cologne on. You know, you can kind of map out the room that you're in and kind of pay attention. Um, using your ears and your hearing, which I understand that some people have, you know, hearing loss with their eyesight loss, you know, and I, 
I feel for them and I know that they adapt and overcome those issues as well. Um, in my situation, I would sit in you know, wherever I was. As long as I wasn't tasked with doing something or working or you know, directly involved with doing something, any spare moment I had, I would focus on the sounds and exactly where they were and visualize pointing at them from where I was sitting. Okay, I wouldn't point because sometimes people freak out about you just end up pointing at them because they're making noise, right? So, <laughs> so I would visualize pointing the direction that they are, all right? And that actually carries over to um, shooting at the range. You know, I use the, the audio for my targets, right? And so this has been a long process of focusing on sounds. You know, you can tell if it's uh, usually uh, waist high or higher than your head. Um, depending on how you turn your head, uh, the sounds can hit one ear f f quicker than the other ear and you can kind of, you know, there, there's all sorts of tips and tricks and you just have to find out what actually works best for you. Um, but I, I suggest trying that. Just sit in a quiet room and obviously starting in a quiet room is going to be easier because there's going to be less things that are going to be distractions. Um, as you do this over time of focusing and mentally pointing at every sound that you hear and pulling a sound over another sound, which is something that you know, you'll learn over time, that you know, if you're in a restaurant and it's not very busy, you, know, you might have three, four tables that there might be several people sitting at. And you can listen to and you know, hear your, your waitress. And then a few minutes later, listen and see where that waitress is in that busy restaurant. Uh, I focus on the waitress, but that's just me. <laughs> but you can also focus on the dead spots, right? So that if you're in a restaurant and every table's full, um, you know, you hear the waitress walk up and stop and talk at a table, and then she walks up a couple of steps and then goes a totally different direction. Well, then you know there's probably an aisle there. If you're focusing and there's a lot of noise in one area, but then in between two sections, it, it's empty or it's dead, uh, you know, maybe that's a door or maybe that is an empty table, but, you know, you can kind of map out, a, uh, you know, restaurants and find out where the doors are. You know, listen to where the waitress goes with uh, her orders, you know, because then you know where the kitchen's at. You know, so there's different things that you can do just to practice and you listen so that if you're in a quieter situation where you're walking down the street, maybe you're, you're going to the park, you know, you can listen and focus to the individual sounds and you can focus on, you know, somebody that's breathing. You know, it's, it's nothing worse than walking into a room and hearing somebody hold their breath because they, you know, they, they want to hide from you because they're scared of those, you know, blind guys getting them. <laughs> But anyways, we can still hear them. We can still hear their, you know, their breath and their whatever, you know. And besides, we can always smell them because, you know, some of them really stick out. But basically focus on that. You know, if, if you want to practice this, if you're sighted, you know, you can blindfold yourself or you can just close your eyes, you know, and try to imagine what direction it's coming from and and see if you can, you know, get more information about it. You know, if it's, if it's a water drip, you know, I mean, obviously walking outside, you don't want to just map your stuff with just sounds because, you know, having wind chimes at your, you know, next to your door is great unless there's no wind, you know, or saying, hey, you know, every time I walk my flagpole, the lanyard bangs on the pole. So, you know, I, I know my that sound, but if the wind's not blowing, then that's obviously an issue. Um, Obviously, there's other tips, you know, turn on a radio or something that, that emits sound. But uh, basically, just pay attention to uh, take the time to understand what's going on around you. Because that's a big thing. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of sighted people, they sit there and they focus on their phone and they can run into a wall because they're, they, they're oblivious to everything that's going on around them. You know, take the time. You know, if you're walking... You know, maybe not use both earbuds, you know, take them out and, and just focus to the sounds. You know, I mean, it, it, play that game 
and practice it because it'll definitely help you out because you know if somebody intends to hurt you you can use that you know to your advantage you can hear them you can hear where they're at if somebody comes in my house and it's just me here i know exactly where they're at and it's not a good day for them <laughs> especially if they're uninvited so thanks for listening uh, if you have any suggestions or comments please leave them below uh, I would really like to hear, you know, what you do to enhance what you have. You know, if you have, uh, you know, partial hearing, you know, if you only have uh, hearing in one ear, you know, obviously that's going to be different than what I do. So I'm just trying to promote awareness to everyone and get these ideas out there because once we get them on the internet, they stay. And so if you see it next week, next year, two years from now, or your kid watches it sometime on Laserdisc or something, you know, it's going to help out. So uh, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, please sub and follow me and get the notifications, all that good stuff. And never fear the dark.